I'm Nathan Judah. I'm here with Tim Spears. Tim, all I want for Christmas is a Wolves home win and Santa delivered in emphatic style. We're not going to mention the hats. Well, the, I think the hats are kind of self-explanatory. We've worn them all day, haven't we? So. Yeah, yeah, we have, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. all day. Uh, yeah, and coincidentally, you're, you're, the last time you were here mm. was Brentford. It was home win. Wolves' last home win. What, what does that mean? It means you've got to turn up for every game for the rest of the season. It, OK, I'll be here. And Wolves, the fans were here today, in force, and they were treated to an absolutely fantastic, thrilling game. Yeah, I think it's the second biggest home crowd of the season, actually, which is great because for the, for the biggest home crowd of the season, Wolves just didn't turn up. No, they didn't. Uh, so neither did the fans for the next game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, thrilling entertainment under Lambert. It's, you know, it's been all guns blazing. They're great going forward. They're terrible at the back. So it makes for uh, entertaining games, which mm. is what it's all about. It's why the fans turn up. It's why we all love the game. And it was brilliant, brilliant entertainment again today. All action from the start as well. Yeah, it was, yeah, God, that seems like a <laughs> long time ago, ago yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, third minute for the goal, and w well, to be honest, the rest of the half was quite dull. Uh, for the kind of first half an hour, Wolves were just in control mm. and moving the ball around really well. Yeah, in a good way, it was dull. Yes, no, absolutely. They, they were in calm control of the game, actually. Mo like I said, moving the ball really well. Jack Price kind of at the heart of that. A lot of quick passes and uh, they, they were winning the ball back, mm. you know, really regularly as well. Every, every player in the team doing their bit pressing high with the intensity the crowd were really kind of buying into it as well yeah um and then all it took was just that one goal wow. and then wow. they, just, they just kind of fell apart you know it's not it's not it's, the first time it's not the second time and it's not gonna be the last time is it they just look devoid of confidence as soon as something goes wrong yeah they just look shot especially at home to be honest it happens more at home we saw it saw it here with the fulham game we saw it here with the sheffield wednesday game as well you know they're a bit different away, away from home mm. but i think it's no fault of anyone's, but there's more pressure playing at home in front of an expecting crowd, and um, they can't handle it yet. Yeah. And I asked Lambert, you know, is that is that down to personnel, or is it down to the way they're playing? Mm -hmm. And he says, "Good question, of, Tim." It's, 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 <laughs> and he said, he said it's a bit of both. So I think we can expect one or two defensive additions to come in in January, certainly. Certainly, you know, yeah. with, with Silvio out for the season, pretty mm. much. But it needs to be rectified because Wolves can't, can't be uh, doing this every week. Not just, not just Mike Williamson coming back, but you mean they need to bring someone in, they need to buy someone, uh, you know, a solid centre-back. Well, Connor Cody's not going to be a right-back for the rest of the season. OK. And I, it, it, he wasn't great today. No. And I offered had literally become a liability in recent weeks. He was mm -hmm. give, giving away goals and causing problems through his own ineptness. You know, he's, he's really gone downhill this season. So whether he can be relied on as well, I, I, you know, I'm not sure. So mm -hmm. I think I think they need a full-back, especially with Sylvia injured. Walter Jackson will be going back, so they need a left-back as well. Yeah. Um, whether they're bringing a centre half, I'm not sure, because Williamson coming mm. back will make a difference. But Connor yeah, they need to sort it out because they can't. They obviously they can't come from behind like this every week. No, they they can't. I mean, Connor Cody not not great at the back, but but going forward that that cross, deep mm. cross, and Helder Costa. Wow. I mean, what a left footed strike! What a volley! He's brilliant. Him, uh, just, he is. Him, this this is it now. This could define the second half of the season. Him and Cavalero mm. on fire in tandem. Mm. I mean, Cavalero. He was a constant threat today. I mean, a lot of his stuff doesn't come off, and he's very frustrating. It reminds me of Bakary Sacco in that respect. But when it does come off, you know... He worked player, hard today, though. He worked tracked hard, back as well when he lost player. the ball. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's why he's in the team, because mm. he started doing that now. So him and Costa in, in tandem could, mm. could really define the second half of the season for me. They make Wolves attractive and entertaining to watch going forward. I mean, Cavalero, £7 million. Costa, you know, wherever he goes at the end of the season, he's looking like probably £10, £12 million plus. So you've got you've got potentially £20 million wingers here combined, you know, at Wolves and Molyneux. So, like you say, you just want to enjoy it while, while it lasts and, and hopefully they can get some wins out of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, eight points clear relegation now, so the, so the pressure's kind of off in that regard because it was really on a couple of weeks ago. Sure. If they lost at QPR, they would have been in the bottom three. Mm. So in that respect, you know, it's been a great turnaround in, in just a couple of weeks. And if they keep that going, you know, looking towards looking towards top half of the table, before you know it, they're already in 15th. Mm. And then the pressure's off. They've got half a season to play with. String a few wins together. You never know. You know, I, I, I don't think anyone expects them you to... You never know. I don't, never. Think, I don't think anyone expects them to be challenging for that top six at any oh. time this season. Oh. 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 But it's oh. not it's not even 2017 yet. So, no. anything, so anything can happen. It could go either way. You want me to make some kind of big, bold prediction? No, no, no. But I just, I just like, I like the me. way there was a hint in, in there. Like, just little hints. Little because little that, hints. It goes without saying, though, doesn't it? I mean, a few wins on the spin and mm. you, you rock it up the table. So mm. it can still go either way. There's a lot of work to be done in January. Mm. But mm. there's been an awful lot of promising signs under Lambert. And also, I mean, only only aside from from the game, but side note from the game, but uh, Bod Varson and Mason both coming on at the end as well and look useful, linked yeah, up quite well. Well, that's that's how they start the season in tandem when Zenga was playing more of a four four one one, and the pair of them I thought looked really good together. Mason got three goals, Bod Varson got two. This is all in August, mm. so five goals between them in August. No, you know, 
not, they haven't scored since, mm. and neither's Dicko. But yeah, they did look good. Within a couple of seconds, they created a chance. Mason, good work that won the penalty as well mm -hmm. in the 85th minute. So yeah, I think I think Mason's a really good option to have actually. And if Bod Varson um, can get himself, you know, fresh and fit and firing mm. again, then he's he's a great threat. And Wolves have suddenly got a few options going forward because Brighton Bakari's, you know, kind of cementing his place in the squad now. I'm going to say big high fives from from Lambert and, and Bakari coming off the picture there as well. I think he really put in a shift, which he was he delighted to see. He did put in a shift. Yeah, a few things. Came, his passing was all over the place, and a few things didn't come off. But he's he's got it in him to do something mm. special, and he really stretches the play in that number ten role. So Wolves three two up, and it wouldn't be Wolves without without a little bit of a late late drama. Exactly. Exactly. Unbelievable. Um. Yeah, so we haven't seen the replay yet from the angle that you need to see it from. Mm -hmm. But every, I mean, I, from my position, <laughs> uh, all the way in the goal, way up in the Billy Wright, it yeah. just it looked, it looked in. Okay. It, it looked like a goal. Right. It didn't, look, you know, it, um, and all the Bristol City players went up, the fans went up. I was just waiting, waiting for them to signal goal. Yeah. And then they didn't, and then Lee, Lee check is not around. Lee Johnson just turned into a bit of a bit of a madman. Yeah. As he did in March. Yeah. Here. He's got form. He has got form. Sprinted on the pitch. Started, started confronting the ref. Ref wasn't having it. So he's yeah. like, right, I'll go for the linesman then. Yeah. <laughs> Carries on running to the other side of the pitch. Linesman literally going, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like walking backwards, like he's about to chin him. <laughs> um, and then eventually he can't. Eventually he calmed down, and he's just we just waited a long time for him to come out. I think he's been waiting to speak to the referee. Mm -hmm. Actually, he didn't really say a lot at all. I think he knows. He yeah. knows he'd be foolish too, so he didn't really say anything to us about how annoyed he was. Sure. Anyway, yeah, no, great, great clearance off the line from Stearman, who said he celebrated like a goal, and it, that's what it was like full time. Mm -hmm. The whole mm -hmm. place went potty, so mm -hmm. the Bud Vars and clap and all the rest of it. So yeah, good times. About about time too. And like I say, they've, they've got the monkey off the back now. They've got a home winner and a chance to get to get two in quick succession. Yeah, QPR, uh, another struggling team. Wolves obviously beat them a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of team you want. Yeah, absolutely, you, think, you, yeah. know, you, you don't really want anyone fighting for, fighting for their lives, you don't want anyone right at the top, so QPR are a pretty average team, mm -hmm. as have Wolves been of course, but yeah, it represents a good chance for what, three wins in a row? Wow, wow, Imagine that. Incredible. Um, Christmas wish to the fans or Christmas message to the peeps? No, Christmas peeps. Yeah, uh, have a good yeah. one. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Well, I'm Christmas gonna... was yesterday. Well, no, it's still Christmas. It's still Christmas. It's still New Year's Eve, really. Just wrap it up. Come on. All right. Um, exciting day. Happy days. We've got a home win. For all the post-match reaction on this one, make sure you log on to expressandstar.com.